Good morning to all the learners. Myself, Dr. Gagan Singh. I am Associate Professor in Department of Commerce. Today, the topic which I am going to discuss with you, that is perfect competitions. Perfect competitions. Uh, in this topic, we are going to discuss about the various assumptions and what are the criteria of a perfect competitions. How the price is determined under perfect competitions. and how the price is determined under the market price and normal price what are the various revenue curves of firm under perfect competitions these are the major issues which we are going to discuss in this today sessions before moving on further uh, i must to explain uh, the meaning of market the structure of market uh, i have detailed uh, clarification about this market what is market before uh, understand the meaning of perfect market and other uh, types of market that is monopolistic monopoly oligopoly uh, monopoly you must know about the uh, what is the market uh, before moving on further uh, in order to explain the meaning of competition be i would like to explain the meaning of market generally market refers to a particular place where goods are bought and sold this is the general definition and generally we describe the market in this way that uh, market is a place where goods are bought and sold but as far as the economics are concerned they use the term market not to uh, denote any particular market place but for a location or reason in which buyers and sellers of particular commodity are in a regular communications meaning to say that now market is not a place where buying and selling uh, are taking place only at one place but it is a place a combinations of particular market place often different locations together constitute one market now nowadays you can see that with the help of efficient transport and communication system interaction between buyers and sellers has increased in the past what uh, we have observed that uh, due to the lack of uh, communication system and transportation system uh, market Uh, is limited to very particular place but uh, in this uh, modern era after the invention of the uh, ict tools and efficient transport communications now the interaction the buyer had increased and market has also increased their place for example i am taking one example that is fresh fruits and vegetables now you can see that these seasonable uh, fruits and vegetable are not only restricted to one place you can find uh, and you you can uh, find all these uh, uh, services and facilities about these fruits and vegetable at any mark at uh, any market at any seasons this is happened only with the help of uh, efficient transport and communication system so uh, meaning to say that now market is not restricted to one place now how we can classify the markets there are three mainly conditions which is defined by the various economists one of them is the substitutability of the product criterion is the one second one is interdependence of the sellers criterion third one is ease of entry criterion i am going to explain one by one first one is substitutability of the product criterion what it, is it 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 means that substitution of the products criterion is related to the existence and closeness of substitute how the product are close to each other and how they are substitute the other product second one is interdependence of sellers criterion meaning to say that the interdependence criterion is related to the number of the firms in the industry and the degree of the product differentiation meaning to say that the number of the firm which exists Uh, in a firm as you know that the industry meaning that the combinations of different firms and how the product they are uh, going to sell in the market how the product are uh, differentiate with each other either they are homogeneous or they are identical but the degree of the product uh, product differentiation uh, differentiation is the one of the criteria which uh, helps in the classification of the market third one is the ease of entry criterion meaning to say that the restrictions which is uh, which is imposed on the entry of the firm is one of the criterion which decide the classification of the market uh, condition of the entry uh, to measure the ease of entry how easily they can enter in the market and how they can easily exit from the market so these are the classification of the market these are the three criterion mainly on which 
we classify the mark market first one is substitution substitutability is the one uh, first one second one is interdependence and third one is uh, one is ease of entry criterion now i would like to explain what is uh, market structures refers market structure basically what does it mean refers to the organizational feature of an industry that influence the firm's behavior in its choice of price and out output these uh, two terms are very important one is the uh, price determination and price and out determinations how they are in organization feature how the firm behavior uh, influence the uh, choice of uh, its uh, determination in the price and output it affect the behavior of firm in respect of their production and pricing it is classified how we can classify it it is classified on the basis of organizational features of the industry and on the basis of degree of competition among the firm the degree of competition among the firm is uh, one of the uh, basic uh, criteria about the market structure now uh, i would like to explain what is organizational features you must know about organizational feature include the number of the firms number of the firm meaning to say that in industry how many numbers uh, number of firms are exist distinctiveness of the produ productivity how their product is distinctive from uh, one product to another elasticity of demand elasticity of demand as we have learned in your previous uh, sessions that it is the measure of the responsiveness of demand of a good to change in the price this is uh, about the elasticity of the demand and the degree of the control over the price of the product how the firm uh, can control uh, the price of the product in different uh, market structures as uh, we are going to discuss in uh, coming uh, slides that how the price is determined under uh, perfect competition so this is all about the market structure you must know market structure is basically organizational features of an industry that influence the firm behaviors in its choice of the price and output next is what are the various kinds of market structures the market structure is generally classified as follows as you know that perfect competitions uh, in other word we can say that the pure competitions in uh, i would like to explain uh, further what is perfect competition and what is pure competitions and how they are differentiate with each other second one is imperfect competitions in for perfect competitions we have monopolistic competition oligopoly competition duopoly competitions and third one is monopoly competitions perfect competitions i will explain further but before uh, explaining uh, it uh, in detail i would like to brief introduction about the monopolistic competition monopolistic competition is a market situations where uh, there are number of uh, buyers and sellers exist but the product which they sells in the market they are distinguished uh or uh, from each others they are, have distinctive features among uh, these pro uh, product which is uh, sell by the uh, sellers in the case of monopolistic competitions on the other hand the oligopoly co competitions uh, in this competitions we have more than uh, two uh, number of buy buyers and number of sellers are more but they are in limited numbers in duopoly we have only two uh, sellers in the market so this is the basic difference between the monopolistic oligopoly and duopoly competitions last but not the least is the monopoly competition is a is a situation in the market where there is only one seller in the market he sell the product which is uh, distinguished from uh, there is no other substitute uh, product in the market he is the whole sole uh, seller in the market and he has the monopoly in the market and he uh, decide the price and also he control on the supply of the the product which is going to sell in the market so this is all about the brief introduction about the in perfect competitions in perfect competition we have monopolistic oligopoly duopoly and uh, monopoly now we are going to discuss in detail about the perfect competitions which is, is the uh, topic of our today's sessions perfect competitions what is it perfect competitions as its uh, name suggests that it is the is that situations of the market in which there are large number of buyers and sellers of homogeneous homogeneous products you must concentrate on these two words that the large number of buyers and sellers are in the market 
and what the kind of product they are selling they are selling the homogeneous homogeneous products meaning to say that they all sell the identical products there is no difference between the products which they, they are uh, selling in the market they are homogeneous they all have the same quality and they all have the same uh, size and they all have the same other features uh, are exist in the uh, market they all are same all the product which are selling by all the uh, sellers they have the same identically uh, qualities and condi- uh, uh, qualities in their product under perfect competitions price of the commodity uh, commodity is determined by the industry one is important uh, aspect in this perfect competition that price is determined by the industry it is not decided by the firms which are the part of the industry it is decided by the industry the seller is the price taker and not price maker what does it mean it mean that all the sellers those who are the part of this industry they have to sell their product as the on the price which is determined by the industry so they are price taker not price maker so they are not in positions to decide the price of the product which they sell in the market so in uh, this perfect competition industry determine the price of the commodity so this is all about the perfect competition perfect competition is the situations where there are large number of buyers and sellers and they are selling the identically products next what are the characteristics assumptions or you can say that the, what are the basic conditions of perfect competition first one is as i told in uh, in its definition that there are large number of buyers and sellers the number of buyers and seller are large in uh, the case of perfect competitions they are large number of buyers and sellers and they exist in the perfect competitions second one is homogeneous product homogeneous product meaning to say that the product which they are selling in the market they have the same uh, qualities uh, and there and there is no difference between the product which are Uh, sell which are uh, sell uh, sell by the different uh, firms those who are the part of the particular industries third one is perfect information about the prevailing pr- prices it is generally assumed that the firm those who are involved in the uh, perfect competitions they all have uh, the idea about the prevailing prices uh, in the market sellers know about what other uh, sellers are uh, charging for their product and buyers also know that how uh, all the sellers uh, are charging for their product so there is uh, conditions or characteristics uh, of this competition is that they uh, perfect information about the prevailing price what the price is going on in the market free entry and free exit of firms it is generally assumed that in perfect competitions there is no restrictions of uh, enter a firm in the industry and there are no restrictions of any firm to exit from uh, this perfect competition so this is the one of the uh, characteristics and assumptions of uh, perfect competitions that any firm can enter uh, in the market and any firm can exit uh, from the market so, uh, next one is perfect mobility of goods and uh, factors it is generally believed that in perfect competitions Uh, there is no restrictions for moving of uh, any goods and pro- uh, factors uh, of production from one place to another place they can uh, move uh, easily without any restrictions by any uh, uh, government restrictions there is no restriction is generally believed that these are the characteristics uh, one of the important characteristics of the perfect competitions next one is that absence of artificial restrictions artificial restrictions meaning to say that there are so many control imposed by the government in order to control the competition in the market so generally it is believed that in perfect competitions there is no artificial uh, restrictions imposed by government and any other regulatory bodies those who are controlling uh, these competitions in the market another one is absence of transport costs in the perfect competition it is believed that in while moving the product from one place to another place there is no transport co- uh, cost M- meaning to say that the transport cost is uh, generally uh, believed to nil there is no transport cost they are all are free to uh, move from one place to another place existence of single price existence of single price meaning to say that as i have said uh, very uh, beginning uh, about the perfect competition that the price is determined by the industry and all the firm have to sell their product at the price which is 
determined by the industry independent decision it is uh, another uh, characteristics or assumption of the perfect competition that there the decision which is taken by the firm they are independent to take any uh, decisions about their product normal profit in the long run it is one of the important characteristics and assumption of the perfect competition that in the long run firm earns only normal profit there is no uh, super uh, normal profit and no normal losses in the long, long run it is, they all are the normal profit now one of the important uh, concept uh, that is uh, perfect versus pure competition you must know about what is pure competition and what is perfect competitions according to professor edward chamberlain pure competition is a market situation where monopoly elements are not to be found monopoly elements meaning to say that they have the monopoly uh, to sell their product in this case price is also a firm is also a price taker what does it mean the price which is decided by the industry has to be uh, the, all the firm have to sell their product at the same price on the other hand what is perfect competition two more conditions apart from the above condition which is mentioned in the pure competitions in perfect competition be uh, the two more conditions must be satisfied what are these that is perfect knowledge on the part of buyers and sellers as i said in the assumptions and conditions that perfect knowledge on the part of buyers and sellers they all are uh, they all have the perfect knowledge about the price uh, pre prevailing prices in the market about the conditions and the complete mobility of the factor production between industries these two conditions if they are covered in the uh, market then uh, this kind of market is known as perfect competition but in the case of pure competitions these two additional conditions which i discuss that perfect knowledge on the part of buyers and sellers about the conditions and the complete mobility of factors of production between industries are not found in the case of pure competitions but if these two conditions are incorporated then uh, the uh, this kind of competition is known as perfect competitions now uh, we will discuss we will also discuss about the advantages and disadvantages of the perfect competitions as far as the advantages are concerned first one is consumer oriented uh, consumer oriented to means uh, meaning to say that price is determined by the industry and no firm can sell the product above the uh, price or below the price sellers have no price power as i said that the sellers meaning to say that the different firms those who are the part of the particular industries they have no power uh, to decide uh, the price product features quality and rate remain similar everywhere everywhere the product feature and quality are remain same there is no difference low startup cost productions advertising and marketing cost due to this sellers Uh, uh they can the price uh, decided by the industry the price is very low low meaning to say that that price is uh, determined as per the consumer oriented base so consumers are really benefited by uh, in this uh, perfect company in this uh, structure of market as far as the disadvantages are concerned this kind of conditions uh, which i have discussed earlier that uh, perfect competitions we have large number of buyers and seller homogeneous product actually these are hypothetical or theoretical concept it is not in uh, possible in the practical concern that uh, all uh, the uh, sellers uh, sell the product at the price which is decided by the industry and they all sell the homogeneous product there are no difference free entry uh, and free exit of the market sellers cannot add value to their product what does it mean it doesn't mean that because uh, they have to they are compelled to sell the product at the price which is determined by the industry so if they add something value to the product then there is no use they are not in position to charge higher price from the uh, customer after adding the value of their product heavy competition generally we can see that in the market uh, there is heavy competition cut throat competition in the market so these are the disadvantages uh, of the perfect competitions now we will discuss about the price determination under perfect competition so this is the one of the important concept in perfect competition how the price is determined under perfect competitions under perfect competition price is determined by industry as i said earlier aggregates of all firm is called industry you must know that what is the uh, meaning of industry in a particular in a comp perfect competition that aggregates 
Some of all the firm uh, is called industry. At this price, all the firms can sell any number of units of, of the com commodity. You must know and you have uh, uh, idea in your mind that the, uh, it is the price which is decided by the uh, industry uh, and all the firms can sell any number of units. Any number of units they can sell the less number and they can sell the more number of units of the commodity at the same price. Equilibrium price is determined at the point. What does it mean? Equilibrium means uh, at the point at which aggregate demand of, for the commodity is equal to aggregate supply. Where the demand and supply intersect with each other, that point is known as equilibrium price. This is example of uh, price determinations. You can see on uh, the slide that the supply of goods uh, is uh, one side price uh, per unit is given and demand uh, for the X uh, product uh, is uh, given. So you can see that when the uh, supply is more than the uh, demand, then the price uh, of uh, 50 uh, is rupees 5 and then uh, demand is for that product is 10. So you can see that as the supply is decreasing, price is also uh, decreasing. And as far as the demand is the concern, when the demand is increasing, the price of the product uh, is uh, also decreasing. It, you can see that the equilibrium point at um, when the price per unit is 3. At this uh, uh, price, you can see that the supply of the goods X is 30 and the demand for that uh, product is 30. This is the point uh, where you can see that equilibrium point where demand and supplies are equal. You can see this with the help of graphs. In the graph O X and O Y axis. O axis you can see that a quantity is mentioned and O Y axis the price of the product is mentioned. You can see that at the price when the price is 3 then demand and supply intersect at the point that is known as E. E is the mean that equilibrium point where demand and supplies are equal. It is the uh, cu uh, curve of industry for this is for the industry and you can see that where it is mentioned that surplus surplus means that where supply is more than demand you can see that at this point above uh, the equilibrium point the supply is more than demand so it is uh, denoted by surplus and below uh, equilibrium point you can see that where supply is less than demand this area show the shortage and in the next uh, graph you can see that the price uh, of uh, equilibrium point is E and uh, in the case of industry and same if you can see in the case of firm that the same line is uh, continue to uh, at the P point in case of uh, firm and in the case of perfect competitions price uh, is fixed by the industry and demand is perfectly elastic. Elastic meaning to say that it is uh, um, uh, horizontal uh, to O uh, axis. You can see that the line is straight to the O uh, axis and the AR and MR is also is the same in the case of perfect competitions uh, meaning to say that they coincide the uh, demand curve of uh, in the case of firm that AR and MR is also equal to the uh, price the, that price which is decided by the uh, industry and all the firm have to sell their product at the same price which is determined by the industry. So E is the equilibrium point means 3 at the uh, when the price is third you can see chart that when the price is uh, 3 then at this uh, uh, price per unit is 3 then demand is uh, for that product, uh, product X is uh, 30 and supply of the product is 30. So equilibrium point where demand and supply intersect demand and aggregate demand and ag aggregate supplies are equals. Now what is the effect of change in demand on price? Supply in these conditions, you must know that supply remaining unchanged. There is no change in supply. It is generally assumed that if demand increases, price rises. And if demand decreases, then price falls. If there is increase in demand, then price will rise. And if there is uh, decline or uh, demand decreases, then price uh, will also fall. So it means that price varies with uh, demand. There is direct relationship between the price and demand. When the uh, demand rise, demand increases, 
price will also rise when the demand decreases then price will also fall now we will explain uh, the equilibrium point with the help of graphs you can see in the first uh, chart that uh, where uh, the price of the product is 3 in that case the quantity uh, of the product which is uh, produced by the seller is 30 and demand of the product is 30 and at this point the demand and supplies are equal and this point is known as equilibrium point the dd curve is the demand curve which slopes from uh, left uh, slope down from left to right and in the case of supply curve you can see that there is upward movement of the supply curve that is ss uh, and which is from left to right and upward in the upward position and in the case of demand curve there is a uh, downward uh, slope downward from uh, left to right in another uh, graph you can see that in the case of uh, firm firm as i said you that firm is a price uh, taker not a price maker in this case o op is the price and where firm has to sell any number of units in the perfect competition ar and mr is also equal because firm cannot uh, sell the product uh, above the price which is determined the industry so in this case uh, dd curve is perfect uh, uh, elastic and it is horizontal to the ox axis now we will discuss about the effect of change in demand on price separately and then we have effect of change in supply on price in this case supply remaining unchanged meaning to say that there is no change in supply if demand increases price uh, will also rise and if demand decreases price will also fall it means price varies with demand there is direct relationship between price and demand if there is uh, the demand of product is increased the price will also rise and if there is decline in uh, demand of a product then price will also fall so you can also see with the help of graph that o x axis there is a quantity and o y axis we have uh, the price of the product in the case of uh, equilibrium that op is the price and oq is the uh, quantity which is uh, sell by the uh, seller and oe is the equilibrium point and when there is increase in the demand then new demand curve is d1 and when there is decline in demand the price will also decline and uh, new equilibrium point will be e2 now the another uh, conditions we have effect of change in supply on price what is the effect of uh, uh, price uh, effect of supply uh, on if there is any change in supply then how it affects the price in this conditions re demand remaining unchanged if supply increases price falls and if supply decreases then price will uh, rise it means price varies inversely there is indirect relations uh, between uh, the price and supply uh, meaning to say that when the su supply of any product is increased then price will uh, fall and where there is a decline uh, in, in the supply of any product then price will rise in this case you can see that demand curve is uh, denoted by dd and supply curve in the first case when the equilibrium point is e in this case the price is op and quantity which is sold by the uh, firm that is oq if there is increase in the supply in increase in the supply of the product that is oq then the price will decline that is op op2 and if there is decline in the uh, supply of any product then price will rise that and the new equilibrium point is e1 so these are the conditions uh, these are the effect when there is change in supply on price so uh, earlier we discussed that how uh, demand affect the price and in this uh, slide we see that how uh, the change uh, if there is change in supply then how it affect the price now another important issue in perfect competition that is determination of market price you must know that what is uh, market price and what is normal price price that is determined in very short period is called market price the price which is determined in a very short period that is known as market price it is the price of uh, commodity generally which prevails in a market at any given time for example if i say that if the market price of any uh, vegetable or any fruits in the morning that is, was rupees 10 to uh, per kg by noon due to rise in the demand it is increased uh, 3 per kg then this is the market price which is uh, generally uh, prevail in the market at any given time 
very short period price is therefore influenced by the demand what does it mean that in short period firm have no time to uh, increase uh, their supply because the time is very limited and they are restricted uh, or they are dependent on the demand and that's why the price is uh, totally influenced by the uh, demand however the price will be determined above uh, all these factors the price will be determined where demand for the commodity is equal to the supply this is the general rule uh, equilibrium is the uh, equilibrium point or price will be determined at the point where demand and supplies are equal in this case goods are divided into two parts perishable goods and durable goods perishable goods and fashionable goods are what are these these are uh, goods uh, which we cannot hold for long time so we have to sell these product uh, earlier because uh, perishable goods cannot uh, retain for long period in uh, first case supply of such goods at any given time is fixed because we cannot increase uh, the supply of product if uh, we want to sell the uh, vegetables or fruits uh, uh, in a market then we are restricted what we have available or what a firm have available to sell uh, itself at fix and in the second case uh, firms set the reserve price for these good durable goods are those goods which we can retain for long period and in this case what happened firm can uh, fix a reserve price and if the price goes uh, down below uh, is the price below uh, this reserve price then firm Uh, stop to sell the product and hold uh, for a period when the demand increase and when the demand increase definitely the price will increase and they sell the uh, sell their durable goods but in the case of perishable goods uh, price is totally determined or influenced by the demand so they have to sell their product before uh, it's uh, they are in good conditions you can see determination of normal price how the normal price is determined and uh, earlier we have discussed about how the market price is determined now we are going to discuss what is normal price normal price uh, comes to prevail in the long period market price generally uh, what uh, we have discussed that uh, market price prevails in the short period but normal uh, price is prevail in the long period also it is known as the long period of price it is influenced by more uh, by supply than demand what does it mean that it is more influenced by the supply because sellers or firm had enough time to uh, adjust uh, uh, the demand uh, by increasing or decreasing uh, the units of uh, product which they are uh, they are going to sell in the market it is the price which tends to prevail in a market when full time is given to the forces of demand and supply to adjust themselves i have, what i have said to that market in this conditions uh, sellers are in position to they can adjust uh, the forces of demand and supply uh, as uh, the as per the requirement uh, of the market normal price and law of returns there are uh, law of returns increasing uh, law of returns uh, that is decreasing law of cost uh, decreasing uh, law of return there are so many law of returns but they are generally related with the normal price in this case you can see that on o axis there is quantity and o y axis there is price is mentioned this is the graph for normal price when the price is p then demand is oq and the equilibrium point is e in this case when the demand increase that is from oq to oq1 then the price is also increase if the uh, demand decrease then the price is also decrease so this is all about the normal price normal price basically is the price which is determined in the long period now the importance of tie element in the determination of value you can see that price of goods is determined for a point where is demand and supply is equal as i said earlier and the price of good will be influenced more by demand or supply depend on the time but does it mean that uh, that if demand is uh, price is uh, influenced by the demand it means that there is short period demand uh, totally influence the price and in the long run supply totally influence uh, the price so it has been uh, examined by the marshall it is the time element is given by the marshall in a very short period the price decided that is known as market price in a short period the price decided that is known as subnormal price in long period it is known as normal price and in very long period it is known as tried cycle so this is all about the importance of time element in the determination of the price now th these are the uh, difference between the market price and normal price Uh, market price is generally decided in the short period and 
नॉर्मल प्राइस इज डिटरमाइंड इन द लॉन्ग पीरियड इक एज फार एज द इक्वलर इम इज द कंसर्न मार्केट प्राइस इज द टेम्परेरी हैव टेम्परेरी इक्वलरियम एंड नॉर्मल प्राइस इज द परमानेंट इक्वलरियम इन द इन दिस केस इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ डिमांड एंड सप्लाई मार्केट प्राइस इज इन्फ्लुएंस बाय टोटली बाय द डिमांड ऑन द अदर हैंड सप्लाई नॉर्मल प्राइस इज इन्फ्लुएंस बाय द सप्लाई एज फार एज द चेंजेस इज कंसर्न मार्केट प्राइस जनरली देर इज ए फ्रिक्वेंटली चेंज इन द मार्केट प्राइस बट एज फार एज द नॉर्मल प्राइस इज कंसर्न देर इज नो फ्रिक्वेंटली चेंजेस because it is determined in the case uh, in the in the long run as far as the kind of goods is concerned uh, perishable goods uh, these kind of goods are uh, the price of these kind of goods covered under uh, market price and durable goods those who have long durability they covered because they have the time to uh, adjust their demand and supply in the long run so all these durable goods come under the normal price as far as the profit or losses is concerned in market price price may Uh, up and low in the uh, market prices, uh, market price cases. But as far as in the case of normal price, firm earn only normal profit because uh, they have to sell their product at the price which is determined by the industry. So uh, as far as the different revenue comes of the firm under perfect competitions, before that we have discussed about uh, what is, is the importance of time element in perfect competition, how supply affect. Uh, price and how demand affect um, uh, price and uh, how the market price and normal price is determined under perfect competition now another important concept uh, learner must know about that the different type of revenue curves of the firm under perfect competition so there are three type of revenue curve we have one is total revenue curve average revenue curve and third one is marginal revenue curve but uh, total revenue curve means total revenue curve is the product of price and quantity sold meaning to say that tr is the total uh, revenue p stand for the uh, price of the product and q stand for the quantity of output produced and sold you can see in the graph and you can see in the chart that uh, the number of units when increasing from 0 uh, 1 2 3 4 and 5 the total revenue curve is multiplied by the unit sold uh, and the multiply with the price and uh, it is increase when the price is increase and you can see that there is uh, up uh, word uh, slope of the total revenue curve in the graph it start from the o and uh, when the price increase when the demand in uh, product uh, uh, of the quantity sold increase the price also increase and the total revenue curve is uh, total revenues also increase so this is all about the total revenue curve total revenue curve I, as i said that is the product of the price and quantity sold next one is the revenue curve of the firm under perfect competition average revenue curve means that in this case the firm is price taker under perfect competition the average revenue of the firm which is its price remains constant so there is no change how it is possible that you can see that total revenue divided by the total quantity uh, of the output produce and sold uh, that is known as average revenue so this way we can calculate the average revenue in the next slide you can see that the revenue curve of the firm under perfect competition what does it mean revenue marginal revenue curve changes in the total revenue constituent upon a small change in output is known as uh, marginal revenue when we divide the change in total re uh, revenue divided by the change in quantity then the marginal revenue comes so you can see with the help of graph also that o y axis uh, we mention the product and o y axis we mention the price and the pp is the uh, price line and in this case in perfect competition as i said earlier that uh, the ar and mr is also equal For, because in this case firm is a price taker not a price maker they have to sell their product at the price which is determined by the industry so now in, uh, in a brief we are going to discuss that is perfect competition is a myth Uh, generally there is uh, as i said that no large number of buyer and seller exist in the market so on this basis we can say that perfect competition uh, is a myth because uh, in market uh, number of buyers and seller may different no homogeneous product is available there is uh, slightly or um, completely difference uh, between the product which is sold by the different firms there is no free entry there are uh, restriction imposed by the government no perfect mobility because lot of restrictions by the government and other regulatory bodies uh, also exist 
फॉल्स एजेंशन ऑफ नो ट्रांसपोर्ट कॉस्ट बिकॉज वेन वी आर गोइंग टू सेल आर प्रोडक्ट फ्राम वन मार्केट टू अनदर मार्केट सो वी हैव टू यूज वेरियस मीन्स ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्ट सो डेफिनेटली द ट्रांसपोर्ट कॉस्ट एग्जिस्ट सो दिस एजेंशन इज ऑल्सो सीम्स टू बी फॉल्स एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ सिंगल प्राइस इज नॉट पॉसिबल बिकॉज एवरी सेलर्स इन प्रजेंट सिनेरियो दे हैव दे सेल देयर प्रोडक्ट बिकॉज देयर इज ए स्लाइट डिफरेंस बिटवीन द प्रोडक्ट विच इज सोल्ड बाई डिफरेंट फॉर्म्स Uh, in different markets variety of prices is there and government control is also there so on that basis we can say that perfect competitions uh, is a myth because these all these assumptions in reality cannot be found uh, so that's why we can say that perfect competition is a myth so this is a slight difference between i am going to uh, discuss with you in uh, next uh, sessions you will uh, uh, no about uh, imperfect competition in detail but these are the uh, basic point where we can difference uh, we can make distinctions between the perfect and imperfect competitions that number of buyer and sellers are different homogeneous product in uh, imperfect competition they sell their distinct product and there is differentiate between their products price taker and price maker is not available uh, assumption is not find in in case of imperfect competition free entry or free exit is not uh, available transport cost is there expenditure on advertisement advertisement one of the most uh, important expenditure while we are deciding the price of product that uh, while we are going to popularize our product we have to spend some money on advertisement is there artificials uh, versus reality uh this kind of perf- uh, in perfect competitions uh, seems to be artificial as far as the in, in perfect competitions it's the real situation of the market so this is all about the perfect competitions and these are the ideal properties ideal properties mean to say that output at minimum cost it is generally believed that consumer pay minimum cost full utilization of resources and firms get only normal uh, profits in the case of uh, long run so these uh, this kind of uh, competition is uh, ma- customer oriented and these are the ideal properties of the competition so i hope that uh, you enjoy these sessions and you learn uh, from uh, this uh, sessions that how uh, what is market uh, perfect competitions and what is market what is market structures and how we can uh, di- uh, distinguish between how and how we can determine the price under perfect competition what is normal price what is uh, market price and what are the basic difference between the perfect and imperfect competitions thank you very much